Hi guys. So we'll, uh, I guess, revisit and uh, bring to an end our experiment comparing our outdoor wood stack uh, to my uh, inside my um, greenhouse slash woodshed wood stack. Uh, it's been just under a month, something like 26 days thereabouts. Um, and I've been tracking all along the, the progress of the moisture content of the wood. And uh, I think we're at a good stopping point now where I've got uh, some pretty good data. And I'll show you some graphs and other information on the, on the trend lines uh, comparing the two stacks. And the weather's also starting to, uh, to get a bit colder. We've had a couple of days of uh, uh, freezing or just below freezing temperatures already. And uh, I want to get this inside, or sorry, this outside stack uh, moved up closer to the house and uh, put into its final resting spot <laughs> before it gets kind of too miserable to, to do that. Uh, so what I'll do is I, I've already taken uh, final readings on, uh, on, on all our marked pieces of wood. But what we'll do next is uh, take final readings on the back sides of the pieces of wood. Uh, because there is a marked difference between the fronts uh, that are facing the sun and the back sides which are in shade all the time. Um, and uh, then we'll split the pieces and take interior readings. And uh, then we'll, we'll uh, I guess, do a little summary and uh, draw up our conclusions as to the, how the two storage and drying methodologies work out. So, I guess, let's uh, proceed. So we, here we have the, uh, the field stack. Uh, all the pieces that I've been following pulled out. Uh, so we've got all the low ones, all the guys at the bottom, all the medium height guys, and all the high guys. Um, so, and, and you know, I'll, I'll write all these down, and uh, but just so you can see what we've got going on here, they're tending to read in the five or six percent range on the fronts of these. So this guy's six point five, and they're actually a little bit difficult to even get a reading. This guy's about five and a half to six. On the front. What's interesting is uh, when you flip them over and take a look at the back readings. You know we're in the the 16 and a half range on this guy. Let's take a look at the back of this one. 22, 22 and a half almost. And let's take a look at the back of this guy. 13. So you can see the backs, which makes sense, are shaded, and um, you know the, the the wind and sun is working on the fronts. The backs, of course, you know don't get that kind of effect on this outdoor field uh, setup. So they'll they'll tend to be uh, have higher moisture content. And what I believe is that you know this side will dry well, and the moisture will tend to work through and wick its way out. And I believe the interiors will be sort of somewhere in between the, uh, the fronts and the backs as far as moisture content goes. But we'll split these guys up and see how they actually look on the in inside. Uh, and then we'll do the same for the, uh, the, the wood that's stored in the shed. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, meter these a little bit more carefully and uh, record them. And then we'll move along. So let's split some of these uh, field stack pieces. Just sort of at random, I just picked a couple just to, to show you guys. Of course, I'll do all of them. Um, but uh, low, medium, and high, uh, piece number two from each strata. So we'll split them up and take an interior measurement. We'll start with low. And bowling pins go down everywhere. So 29, 25, depending on where we uh, where we measure that. This is the other half. 
This is an outside piece. Uh, this is the outside portion. This here is the inside portion. And actually here you can even see the, uh, the moisture. Interesting. So let's see what the other ones look like. There's a knot right in the middle of this guy. Okay. Well, at least we've opened them up a little bit. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Oh, nineteen nine. So this guy's a little drier. Twenty-one, twenty-two is not too bad. That was a medium guy. Seems to be drier than the low guy. And this is the highest uh, on the stack, high number two. Interior of high number two. 23 in a bit. 23 high. 22 and a half thereabouts. Again, a little bit better than the low. So it gives you gives you an idea, I guess, of the of the inside. Of course, we expected the inside to be higher than than the outside uh, sun facing. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, split all of these up, meter them, record them, and then we'll go to the uh, to the uh, woodshed and do the same process. Well, after much effort. <laughs> I managed to extract the um, the three sets of three pieces of wood from the uh, from the shed. And the reason why I was with much effort is because I didn't have access to the back to uh, be able to pull things out or kick them through or anything like that. I actually had to move uh, the whole pile around in order, to, especially the low ones, to get at them. But anyways, I've got them out now, and uh, we'll take a look at the uh, the back side moisture content, uh, compare that to the front, and then we'll go and split them. So we've got, uh, here is the, um, the low set, so that's the low number one, this is medium uh, in the pile, and this is the high one in the pile. So we'll just take a quick look at the fronts, and these are all registering quite low values, when I can even get them to register. They're all in the 6 to 7 percent moisture range on, on the fronts. Uh, let's take a look at the, the backs. So we're seeing 27 on this guy, which is a massive difference. We're seeing oh, 14 thereabouts, when I can get a reading on here. Highs in the 14 range on this guy. And about a 19 ish range on this guy. So I'll uh, spend a, another minute or two uh, metering these more carefully, recording them, and then we'll go split them and see what the interiors look like. Uh, somewhere in the 19, 20% range, 20.1, 1. 21.1. So let's go medium, strata, wood number two. Guys, 24, 23, 24, 25 low, 22-ish, so thereabouts, we'll split the well. So, 
1905 uh, thereabouts, 196. So this piece is a little dry. Okay, so what I'll do is uh, I'll meter these a bit more carefully, uh, record them, split the rest of them, record them, and then we'll come back with uh, some observations and uh, maybe we can uh, draw a few conclusions from this as well. And hopefully you guys will find this of uh, some use. Yeah, so I, you know I've tracked the numbers from uh, mid-September uh, up until um, October 10th, basically every day or as close to every day as I could, uh, looking at the moisture uh, content using a moisture reader uh, on the end grain um, uh, you know, of the the various pieces of wood that I marked out, so that I was testing consistent. Uh, the same piece of wood over and over again uh, and testing in the same position on the piece of wood over and over again. Uh, recorded the percentage moisture um, in this table so this uh, gray shaded section are all the the numbers uh, from the field stack and the non gray shaded numbers are uh, recorded from the shed stack. Um, so just to walk you through some of the, the highlights I guess um, looking on a on a day by day basis, uh, sort of a, the the average uh, moisture content of the field versus uh, versus the the shed, and which is which is higher on a day by day comparison. Uh, negative numbers indicate um, the the um, the field is uh, better, and um, Positive numbers indicate the shed is doing better. Um, so we can see some days you know, the the field is better, and some days uh, the shed average moisture is better. Um, and we wind up with uh, the shed winning um, seemingly by a big number, although we do have sort of two. Uh, anomalous days. Uh, even if we took those out, it still has a, a number of uh, slightly positive. I think it's in the five range. Um, looking down here, looking at the uh, average improvement. Um, so, you know, taking the moisture content of the first day and comparing that um, to the, the the final readings. And the the final reading was on a on a good drying, nice sunny day. Um, and by some miracle, the average improvements worked out to be exactly identical between uh, between the two of them. So not a whole lot of difference between the shed and uh, and the field stack. Um, more important numbers, though, um, because these are just measured on the outside, uh, the end, uh, on the end grain of the pieces of wood, doesn't really give us an idea of what uh, is on the inside. So after I had split the wood and uh, took these numbers here, uh, which were all moisture readings from the interior of the wood, um, taking a look at the average uh, moisture in the field compared to the shed, uh, the shed actually does come out ahead a little bit by uh, uh, you know a percent and a half or thereabouts, by, by a little bit uh, in favor of, of the shed. Um, so we'll see if we can scroll down here. I've got a, uh, uh, just a couple of uh, graphs on the on the field side of things, um, and this is change over time. So this w would be the moisture on the first day uh, down to the last day, and of course we've got a, uh, a line of best fit whose slope is indicating that we're improving, and uh, the the shed is very similar. Um, one thing that you may, f or that I noticed, um, was that the daily variations are not nearly as pronounced on the shed as they are uh, in the field. And that makes sense, you know, the, the shed on a rainy day isn't being directly rained upon. The, uh, the pieces of wood at the, at the bottom uh, of the, the stack in the shed isn't getting any, any uh, rain hitting the ground and splashing up into it. Uh, where we're, we're definitely getting that on the on the um, field stack, and uh, this graph here actually with the with the shed and field um, on the same chart 
shows this quite well. So the blue is uh, is the field, and you'll notice uh, but mostly the, the peaks are higher, and uh, as well as the valleys, for the most part, are lower. So it's uh, sort of more volatility with the outside stack. Um, with the inside stack, it still changes. Uh, we still get peaks and valleys based on um, you know rainy days. Um, the interior moisture tends to come to the outside and doesn't um, you know evaporate that quickly, and so we get these peaks. And on good sunny days, the uh, the outside moisture tends to be lower, and that's where I was doing the the recordings. Um, so basically the the conclusion is that our shed is at least equal to an idealized location for an outside storage and it and uh, you know these results are actually indicating that maybe marginally better you know not not dramatically better so i i wouldn't uh, go crazy to put everything in the shed to the exclusion of the outside but what it does tell me is that I can use both locations and be quite successful with both locations. Um, so I can fill my shed up and uh, have the wood dry and I don't need to worry about exclusively having it in, in a, an outdoor stack far away from the house uh, which will be a pain to get the wood into um, in the winter. So it basically gives me a bit of peace of mind that I haven't wasted my time building uh, the shed, and um, you know, and that we're going to wind up with with viable uh, viable firewood. So, hopefully, this information is a little bit helpful uh, to somebody and uh, of of some interest. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, we'll we'll see how it uh, progresses over time. So the, you know, the wood isn't um, you know we we're we're still having in the mid to low 20s um, percent wise moisture content in the wood so I you know it's not seasoned yet it's not really ready to be used yet but it's going in the right direction and I believe will be uh, ready to use by the time we, we really need it and which will be in, an, in another month or two.